We can use Astro Pixel Processor to carry out corrective processing to images that have been affected by light pollution. Images that were taken with wide field setups such as short focal length telescopes with large imaging sensors or with camera lenses will usually contain light pollution gradients. For this video we'll be using an image of M8, the Lagoon Nebula, and M20, the Triffid Nebula. I'll start off by loading the original FITS image. As it's a combined multi-filter image, we'll use the other processed button under the load menu. The image appears in the file list window at the bottom, so I'll double click on it to open it. You can see that it's a bit of a horror story with uh, multiple coloured gradients. I shot this data on a few nights when the bright moon was nearby in the sky. To make matters worse, the equatorial mount carried out a meridian flip during the imaging run so the light pollution gradients are spread across the image. It's a very short data set taken using RGB filters, but works well to demonstrate APP's light pollution reduction tool. Click on the Tools button to open APP's extensive list of tool options. We'll scroll down to the Remove Light Pollution button to access the tool. Click on Yes to continue. APP will alert us that it is neutralising the sky background, a process that must be applied before we can attempt to fix the light pollution gradients. At upper left, we'll be prompted that we have to create area selection boxes with a minimum of five. When we create these, it doesn't matter if the stars are contained in the boxes, but we must ensure that there is no nebulosity inside the boxes. I'll draw multiple boxes that encompass the worst of the gradients. Now we'll click on the Calculate button. There will be a pause while APP calculates the light pollution model. The corrected image will appear on the screen and you can see that it's done a great job of removing the gradients. Notice that several of the selection boxes have changed from green to yellow and red. This is an indication that APP has analysed the selection boxes and decided that some of them aren't suitable to be included in the model. The red boxes should be excluded from the modelling procedure and we can do this by clicking on the remove red button on the left hand side of the screen. The yellow boxes aren't much of a problem so we can leave them in place. I'll click on the recalculate button and after a short pause a new version will appear on the screen. Notice that the red and yellow boxes have changed slightly but I'm quite happy with the results of the modification. You can view the actual light pollution model that APP has created by clicking on the green Show Model button. As you can see, it's pretty spectacular. To return to the modified image, click on the Show Corrected Image button. When you are happy with the result, you can click on the OK and Save button. Doing so opens the Save menu, and when you're happy with the contents, click on OK. Note that the modified image has appeared in the file list window at the bottom and now has further contents in the file name, notably LPC and CBG. This tells us that APP has applied a calibration on the background and applied the light pollution correction tool. We can carry out a before and after inspection by clicking on the original light polluted image. As you can see, it's done a very good job of removing the worst of the light pollution gradients. Now we'll move on to the Calibrate Star Colours tool. We'll start off by opening an image that was taken with the Chile 1 telescope of the globular cluster NGC 6752. The image shown on screen was RGB combined but has had no further processing applied to it. The image looks quite good but there is a kind of muddy cast to it and I think we can get a much better result by using this tool. Let's start off by clicking on the Calibrate Star Colours button. We'll be asked if we want to calibrate the star colours in the current image and for this we click Yes. The next menu alerts us that the image must be background calibrated or light pollution calibrated. 
For this, we'll just use background calibration as the image shouldn't be affected by light pollution. I'll click on the drop list and select Calibrate Background and then click OK. To proceed, we must make at least four selection boxes on the image. I'll draw these on the image ensuring that we select just the background with minimal stars included. Now click on the Calculate button and within a few seconds the image should be background calibrated. Click on the OK and Save button to open the Save Options menu and note from here that the file name now contains the extension CBG for Calibrated Background. Click on OK to save the image. Now we'll be presented with a box that alerts us that the star colour calibration will continue. Click on OK. Firstly, the image will be cloned into the file viewer and now we must draw at least one selection box on the image. As we are working with only stars in this image, I'm going to draw one big selection box. On the left hand side of the screen, under calibration mode, we have three options. Balance RGB, black body and extinction, and adaptive black body and extinction. This latter is the default setting, so we'll leave it on that. In astrophysics, a black body is a perfect emitter and absorber of radiation, and stars are pretty good approximations to them. If we can get APP to calibrate the star to the black body curve, we should see an improvement in the image. For now, I'll leave all the other settings on their defaults. Scroll down and press the Calculate button. After a few seconds, APP will present the image and notice how the star colours have been modified. On the left are two graphs which map the distribution of stars that have been calibrated against the black body model which is shown as a diagonal green line. You can see that there are a few outlier stars shown on the graph that are coloured orange. These aren't a problem but we can correct these outlier stars by changing the kappa star rejection slider. I'll increase this to a value of around about 3 and click on the recalculate button again. This has helped to reduce the outlier stars. Notice that in both graphs the black body model line shown in green is offset slightly from the calibrated stars. We can change the angle of the black body model by adjusting the slope sliders. For this image I found that a value of 1.08 for slope 1 and a value of 2.14 for slope 2 seem to work well and matches the distribution of calibrated stars better. Our new black body model line is shown in grey. Once we are happy with the results, click on the OK and Save button. Note that in the Save Options menu, the file name has been appended with CSC for Calibrate Star Colours. Click on OK to save the image. We can apply the same technique to our image of M8 that was light pollution corrected in the earlier section of this video. I'll open the image and then click on the Calibrate Star Colours button again and click Yes to the prompt. Note that because this image has been calibrated already, we will be prompted to create the calibration selection boxes without having to neutralise the background of the image. This time I'll draw multiple selection boxes on the image to avoid any nebulosity. Click on the Calculate button to start the process. When working with multiple selection boxes, the procedure takes a little bit longer to complete.
Notice that there are more outlier stars coloured in orange on the graph this time. As before, I'll raise the star rejection capper to around about 4 and press the Calculate button again. OK, that's helped to reduce some of the outliers. The black body model line in green matches the calibrated star distribution quite well, so I won't make any other adjustments. We can experiment further by changing the calibration mode on the left to balance RGB. I'll click the recalculate button to apply the effect. Notice that both graphs show more of a scatter, but the image in the viewer still looks quite good. We don't have the option to change the slope of the black body model line in this mode, but I can raise the star rejection capper to reduce the outlier stars. We can also try the black body and extinction option under the calibration mode, and this seems to work quite well. I'll make a small adjustment to the graph slopes using values of 1.11 and 2.08 respectively. The new slope shown in grey match this stellar distribution better now. It's worth experimenting with these settings to get good results. I think that all three of the calibration mode options have improved the image. Once you're happy with the results, click the Save button as usual.